What's up, people? In this video, we're going to talk about uh, how you should prepare to come out of this coronavirus pandemic thing that is going on right now. Um, and when I say how you should prepare, I'm not going to tell you specifically how to prepare, but just how you should, right? It, or in other words, that you should prepare to come out of this. Because in a couple of months, this will be over. And if you have spent all of your time on social media, consuming social media, reading articles, obsessing about how the coronavirus is going to like destroy everybody and you're all going to die and you spend your time doing nothing and being unproductive, I think it's a waste of what has been essentially forced on us by everyone, which is essentially like it's not necessarily a forced quarantine i mean you can still go outside right you, you can go outside if you want what are you going to do walk around outside by yourself i guess you could do that anyway the point is that you're not there's nothing to do right restaurants are closed bars are closed shopping malls are closed everything is literally closed and you're not allowed to gather in groups of more than 10 people which means the idea is that like okay pretty much only family like you can go see your family if you have to or like go to your friend's house who's like down the street if you want to sit and talk to somebody but that's pretty much it right that's that's kind of the idea and i guess it comes from a good place because the people who are in charge don't know any better and they think that this is going to somehow like stop the spread of what's going on so the point is this is that this is probably going to go on now i would say at least until the end of april beginning of may there was an article in, uh, I don't remember what magazine or what uh, website it was, where MGM Group said to like all of the entertainers that do shows at their properties to plan on being back in the middle of May, right? So we can use that. I would say we could use that as a barometer of um, when they expect everything will be done, right? MGM Group, multi-billion dollar corporation. It's likely that they... If they, if that's what they expect, I would, I would trust what they think over, I, I think corporations are smarter than the government and the CDC. Let me put it that way, right? So anyway, the point is this, you have two months to plan for what, you know, for when the world goes back to normal. And if you've looked at my like, uh, YouTube wall or whatever it is, where you can actually make a post, I posted a couple of polls on there asking people what they would do in these next two months. And a lot of people have said like, start a business, learn a skill you know, I don't know, write a book, like whatever it is. Um, so anyway, that's the point is that I, I encourage you to take advantage of these two months and get as much of it out of it, get as much out of it as you can. Don't just stay home and go on social media. I'm guilty of this too, especially now. Cause like, what else are you going to do? You know, everyone's at home right now. I, 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 I'm sure you've talked to people on the phone and you're like, Hey, so what's up? What are you doing? How's it going? And it's like, dude, I'm doing the same thing everybody else is doing. I'm stuck at home. I'm not doing anything. Lines at the grocery store are long and I'm, I'm losing my mind because of this. So like, just think about it. Now I'll give you some ideas, right? Here, here's one of the things that I think is very important for people to do um, during these next two months. And that is to, to fight the spread of misinformation or to at least like create doubt in some people's minds that this is like going to end the world and, and that it's as serious as the media is making it out to be. I think, and I've seen when I think 100% for sure, the media is blowing this out of proportion to get people to read their articles or to watch the news. That's 100% what's going on. And that's what's gotten people so crazy. And that's what's created this pandemic, right? Is that you have like, let's call them average people or normal people who are reading the news, watching TV, and they're freaking out because they don't know any better, right? And then you have people with control, let's call them corporations, government officials, who are making calls because of that, right? Because the idea is that corporations, they don't want to stay open and appear insensitive, right? They don't want to say, actually, we don't think this shit is that big of a deal. We're going to stay open, because um, that would make, make them appear insensitive to all the casual, average, stupid people who are freaking out. So they close, right? They're like, you know what? We'll take the hit for the time being. The government seems to be sympathetic. So we're just going to close and ride this out and reopen when all the stupid people have like relaxed a little bit. And the governments specifically, um, I would say this kind of started like with the federal government, right? I, I want to say that like Trump started freaking out before all the state governments started freaking out. Uh, because the media is mainly controlled by like people who have 
I hate to say this, like a liberal agenda. I can't even believe I'm saying that. Like I hate politics so much. I hate all that conspiracy theory shit. But the fact remains is that like CNN, every fucking thing that they say is against Trump and they're the biggest media outlet. And all of the major media outlets are also like anti, you know, conservative, I guess, or anti-Trump at least, like at least anti-Trump. They hate Trump. Um, So every bit of news that's well not every bit of news many of the bits of news that are coming out about the coronavirus and the pandemic and all this stuff um they're spinning to be against trump right so so what is the net effect of this is that you have all of the media outlets pumping this thing up to be like way more crazy than it really is you're whipping all the average stupid people into a frenzy and the fear from the government is that oh my god if we don't do something even though this is not that big of a deal the perception is that it is a big deal if we don't do something about it right now all these average stupid people are going to flip their shit and they're going to blame me for it because that's what they're watching on the news and they already believe everything that's on the news anyway so it's kind of just a precaution similarly to how it's a precaution for the corporations to do the same thing so that like at least they're on the safe side and you also see this with a lot of like Sorry, average stupid people. I need to think of a better word for that, but that I can't think of anything else. You see this a lot um, on Facebook, really. Less so on um, you know other social media sites because with Facebook, you have the option to post an article, a picture, a video, and you can also make a post, right? So you have hundreds of words, if not thousands of words that you can use to express your opinion as compared to like Twitter or Instagram or like... I don't know, you know, forget about Snapchat, like all of those have a character limit. So you can post your link, video, whatever, and you can express your opinion about it. So it, tra- it attracts a lot of people who think that their opinion should be heard for some reason. And what you see is that you see them expressing their opinion to like promote solidarity with all the average stupid people who are freaking out because those people are the most intolerant ones. And if you go against what they say, they are like super quick to jump down your throat and call you a bad person because you're not freaking out along with them. You're like challenging their worldview. Okay. So that's the point. Now, now what is this all like? What should you do in response to all of this? I think you should do two things. Number one, I think that you should fight the spread of uh, panic, fight the spread of hysteria by posting links that are um, contrary to what to, to the message that the media is spreading. Right. Post good news about the coronavirus. Post like things about vaccines coming out or potential vaccines, even though I don't think vaccines are really necessary, but whatever. Fine. Post things about vaccines because normal people think that's good. Um, post things about these drugs that are maybe curing the coronavirus coming out. Post things about how 99, how over 99% of people who get the coronavirus are expected to recover. Post things about, I posted an article the other day on Facebook. I hate Facebook. I never post on Facebook. I never go on Facebook. But, well, anyway, I posted an article about how uh, over 99% of the people who were in Italy who died had health conditions already who were already sick they had diabetes they had heart disease they had um, high blood pressure you know or they had at least two of these or sorry at least three of these things 50 percent had at least three health conditions already and they were over 80 years old so like you know what i mean this this is not going to end the world because sorry o- older people who are already very sick are dying from it it's not going to happen and like i said earlier what i was going to say is that I I never go on Facebook. I hate Facebook, but I see that this is where the war is being fought, so to speak. Like, it's not really a war. This is where the hysteria is spreading, right? And somebody needs to come in. And I I never feel a sense of social responsibility. I fucking hate everybody. Like, I think everyone's an idiot. But like, this is where it's happening, you know? So if if you want, I'm doing it for selfish reasons. I want this to be over as soon as possible because it's fucking stupid. So I feel responsibility to go on there and post these links so that, it will at least create doubt in people's minds that this isn't as bad as like their crazy fucking neighbor who like post retarded shit on Facebook all the time is saying that it is, you know what I mean? So I encourage you to also post things like that, right? Look for these articles online. They're out there. You have to weed through like all the paranoia and all the panicky shit to find them, but they are out there, right? Post them. I post several a day on Facebook. Now I am literally never on Facebook. I hate Facebook. Every time I go on Facebook, it makes me like hate the human race even more. But now I feel like, I honestly feel like it's my responsibility to like go on there and post these articles that put this whole thing in perspective that it's really not that bad and that it's the panic and the hysteria that is really like driving people crazy. Okay. So that's one of the things I think you should do. That shouldn't take too long. Don't get sucked into the whirlpool of like being on Facebook and arguing with people. You can do that a little bit because some people 
they are freaking out and they're illogical and they do need to be put in their place. And if you think that that's worth your time to do that, fine. Don't spend too much time doing it. Just post a couple articles a day about how this is not so bad. And the other thing that I think you should do is that you should prepare more like financially for when this is over, right? Like maybe the two month timeline that MGM said and that I'm like optimistically hoping will actually come to pass. Maybe that's a little bit optimistic, right? Maybe it is. It's possible. I read something yesterday that said like Trump says it'll take till July, August. I really don't think that's going to happen in the United States. Highly doubt it. I think that's just more scare tactics by the media and like the Trump administration covering their own ass so that they're not seen as like, you know, being flippant about this. Anyway, that said, let's just assume two months at the minimum, right? Let's just let's let's do a conservative estimate of uh, of 60 days, right? You have 60 days starting from today, March 21st, or really a couple days ago, whatever, March 21st, you have 60 days to prepare. How are you going to prepare to come out of this better than when you went in? Um, it, there's a famous exercise, or I don't know if it's famous, but it's something that I heard on one of Tony Robbins' programs where he says, anytime you're faced with a bad situation that has you like irritated or angry or something, you have to ask yourself the question, what's good about this? And it's very good for kind of changing your opinion about something that's bad, right? And, and the reason to do that, not because you should always be happy all the time and delusional, but because being angry and upset and depressed is not going to help you do anything productive. Whereas if you ask yourself the question, what's good about this? You will always find the silver lining, sometimes multiple silver linings. And you'll think that, um, you know, it'll, it'll change your opinion, change your attitude, which will lead to more productive action. So I asked myself the question, what's good about this? Because I'm currently stuck in Cleveland. I'm not making any money. I'm just sitting here in this apartment by myself. I would rather be literally anywhere else right now, no offense to the people who I'm here with, if they're watching this, I don't think they are. Um, but I asked myself, I was like, what's good about this? And I, I came to the conclusion that I have two months now to prepare to come out of this better than when I come in and very likely much better than the rest of the people who are going through this now who are not preparing at all. Because most people, they just give in to their base instincts of wanting to rage on social media and like completely letting themselves go because they think the world is ending. So anyway, what's the point? You need to plan on how you're going to come out of this better than you went in. A couple options that I think are worth considering. Number one, I think is a good time to like, if you have an online business idea that you want to start, you want to do, I don't know, I, I've dabbled in a lot of this stuff. Like there's a ton of options out there of things you can do. You can make anything work technically, um, but the best option seems to be creating some sort of like information product or coaching program where you charge people a lot of money to teach them how to do something. Some sort of skill-based training, right? You don't need a lot of clients. Um, you can teach people, you know, you can charge somebody a thousand dollars a month to teach them how to do something. I'm sure everybody here who's watching this knows how to do something well enough that somebody else would pay them a thousand dollars a month to learn how to do it. And if you don't know anything like that, like for me, ob obvious example is fitness, right? I've been putting off doing like consulting for fitness for a very long time because in my mind, it was always stupid that somebody would pay me or pay anybody any amount of money to look, to, to get fit when, um, all the information is available for free on the internet. But I was talking to somebody yesterday and he said something very interesting. He's like, they're not paying you for information, they're paying you for transformation, right? So anyway, a little bit of a teaser, that's what I'm going to be doing in these next 60 days is putting together a coaching program to teach people how to, not even really to teach people how to get fit, it's fucking easy. Like eat meat and eggs, go to the gym and like eat once a day, that's it, that's all you have to do. Um, I guess the coaching program is just a little bit more detail on that and me, hounding you and holding you accountable with calls every week and making you feel bad if you don't do it. So that's one of the things I'm going to do. Um, but, but for your, in your case, maybe that's not applicable. Maybe you want to start a blog. Maybe you want to sell things on eBay. Maybe you want to like start an online, you know, a lifestyle brand or start a YouTube channel, whatever it is, whatever you want to do. Um, another thing that you can do is you can take these two months and learn a skill, right? If you take 60 days and you work on something for three or four hours a day and you learn how to do it, you're not going to be an expert by the end of those two months, but you will have a significant amount of knowledge. Like let's say three hours a day for 60 days, it's 180 hours. If you spend 180 hours doing something, you will have achieved a very high skill level when compared to people who have no idea what they're doing. So you will have achieved a very high skill level and it will be high enough that you can, if you so desire, charge people to you know, like 
you know hire you for that skill if you want so definitely learn a new skill if you're interested in like coding or like you know writing software or something like that that's a good choice um there's a memory course that i was interested in doing i don't know if that appeals to anybody having like a photographic memory i always thought that was kind of cool you can learn to be a fucking magician if you want like you know you can learn how to dance like you can actually take advantage of this time to learn how to do anything don't just sit on your ass don't just do nothing just get out there and be productive do something if you have poor health get your health in order like start eating healthy food start working out at home start going on walks like you you have you have a time out of 60 days at least you have free time right now you can do whatever you want don't just sit around and do nothing go on facebook where all, where all the stupid people congregate no offense anybody i know on facebook but kind of a little offense go on facebook post at least, at least one link a day to create doubt in people's minds that think that this thing is not as bad as they're saying it is that as they think it is as the media says it is and as the government and corporations are implying that it is post at least one link a day and uh work on yourself do something for yourself so that when this entire thing is over you are well positioned to take advantage of the inevitable resurgence in the economy that is going to happen this is going to be over people are going to go berserk fucking shopping going to bars going to the beach it's going to happen okay i don't know when it's going to happen but it's probably going to happen in the summertime when everybody wants to go outside anyway so it's going to be like it's going to be packed it's going to be booming and position yourself well to take advantage of that. Okay, so I'm gonna leave a bunch of links in the description um, for things like online resources where you can learn stuff, um, some of the articles that I've already shared that I encourage you also to share on Facebook. Um, and that's basically it. If you guys have plans for what you're gonna do in the next 60 days, leave me a comment, let me know what you're gonna do, give me some ideas, I also want some ideas. Um, yeah, and if you have any questions, let me know, leave me a comment, peace.